How's it going, everyone? It is Skullzy here, and I have some more Bethesda news for you all. It's still kinda quiet on the Bethesda side of the gaming industry, no new major news or anything like that. But don't worry, because I have some pretty fun speculative videos planned for the future. And when there is enough information, enough small Bethesda news or events to break down in a video like this, I will do so. So yeah, today is another one of those videos where I break down the most recent small but still interesting Bethesda related news, so let's not waste any more time and let's get to today's information. First off, there is a pretty interesting discovery regarding Deathloop, which is still, by the way, a timed PlayStation exclusive, even though Microsoft did purchase Bethesda and ZeniMax and all of their studios, including Arcane, the makers of Deathloop. Regardless of any future Xbox or Microsoft Bethesda exclusivity, Microsoft still plans to honor the timed exclusivity for PlayStation regarding Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo. And if you go over to the official PlayStation store and look up Deathloop, you can find the story listing for Deathloop right here, and one interesting thing, as you can see, right here is it says online play required. Now, it was never confirmed if Deathloop was online only before, however, given like the nature of the game, where you as the player have to traverse and go through this area where you are being hunted by another character, all the while fighting other NPCs in your way, it seemed like this game would kind of be focused on online anyway, because it seemed like a player versus player scenario with NPCs. PCs in between both of them that kind of just served as an opposition or a challenge for both of them, I would assume. But one thing we do need to keep in mind here, though, is Arcane did say that the online experience would basically be similar to or the same exact experience you would get in the single player version of Deathloop as well. So, Deathloop is indeed going to have single player elements and probably have a single player story or a single player mode, whatever it is, there's going to be a single player element to this game as well. So, the fact that an online connection is required, or rather that online play is required right here, makes people kind of wonder if this game is going to be online only, and if perhaps Arcane switched things up and Deathloop isn't going to have any single player elements at all. Obviously, this is still a bit speculative, this is a rumor right now, but it is based on something official because this is the real Deathloop page listing for the PlayStation Store, so keep that in mind here. We'll just have to wait for an official statement from Bethesda one way or another. Deathloop is set to be released in the second quarter of 2021 based upon an official statement made back on August this year where Arcane announced that Deathloop would be delayed because Deathloop was set to be released with the next generation of consoles this year. However, that didn't happen. So we still got plenty of time for official statements regarding Deathloop and whether or not it will have a single player mode or not. But either way, let's move on to the next thing. There are a couple new and interesting Bethesda Game Studios job postings specifically for Bethesda Game Studios in Rockville, Maryland, which is the studio making Starfield and the Elder Scrolls 6. And I believe these job postings have to do with The Elder Scrolls 6 because, in my opinion, Starfield is probably basically almost finished and is essentially being bug tested because I believe the game will come out in November of 2021 and most of the stuff regarding what we're going to see in these job postings is probably finished already. The job postings are this one right here for an artificial intelligence programmer which was posted yesterday and it's good to see Bethesda Game Studios paying special attention to their AI because, as Cyberpunk 2077 has shown us, if the end NPCs in the world don't really seem alive and believable. It takes away a lot from the immersion of the game, so it's good to see Bethesda paying particular attention to the artificial intelligence in their games, because you gotta keep in mind here that AI isn't just for the characters you are fighting and their tactics and stuff they choose to use against you in battle. It's actually for the world as well, so I'm kinda interested to see just how alive and realistic and believable Starfield and the Elder Scrolls 6 will be. And then we have another animation programmer job posting for Bethesda Game Studios in Rockville, Maryland again, so their animations are going to be overhauled for the next generation of their open world RPGs, and that's awesome because their animations do seem kind of outdated even in Fallout 76, although Fallout 76 has been improved a lot since the game was originally released. But if you play Fallout 4 or especially Skyrim, you can see exactly what I'm talking about, about how even back then the animations seemed a little dated, so hopefully we see some more animations along like the same quality as Red Dead Redemption 2, for example. And next up, like yesterday's video with Danny O'Dwyer giving his opinion on that Starfield and the Elder Scrolls 6 release date, we get something similar from another industry insider regarding the release date order for when they believe Starfield Avowed, Fable, and the Elder Scrolls 6 will be released in. Remember though, this is probably just their guess, but this industry insider does have a proven track record with being able to identify early leaks and saying whether or not they are true. There are numerous Halo leaks and other Microsoft 
leaks, for example, that people didn't believe were legit, but Clobril actually confirmed that they were real, and then shortly after, it was official that these leaks were real. Now, I can't actually break down all of the leaks that Clobril were able to confirm that actually backs up their credibility, because I, I don't actually know all that, but they believe that the release order for these games will be Starfield, Avowed, Fable, and then The Elder Scrolls 6, and like I said, this isn't anything huge, this isn't huge news or anything like that, and most people could probably assume that the games would come out in this order anyway, but anytime some kind of insider gives their thoughts on release date orders or times or anything like that, people do at me over on Twitter with these things, so I figured I'd mention it in today's video, even though it's something short and just simple. And the last thing I want to talk about in today's video, because Fallout 76 is a game, I'm starting to actually get into a lot more. The Scrolls of Avalon Fallout 76 Season 3 Community Calendar has been updated within the last week or so, and you can see there are a lot of quality of life updates planned for Fallout 76, including a lot of like little bonuses and stuff you can unlock throughout January, February, and March, and I love how Bethesda Game Studios in Austin actually do a great job at giving you all these extra awards for playing the game and actually outlining what they're going to be doing in the future of this game as well. Bethesda always does a great job letting the community know what their plans are for Fallout 76 over the next coming months involving the game's updates, improvements, or new content, and that's something that should be commended because a lot of studios don't do a good enough job at doing that, or they're at least not completely honest with the updates and improvements that you will see. Anything Bethesda Game Studios has highlighted in these little community updates and these like seasonal calendar things is usually always happened, and I am just really impressed with how Bethesda is handling the community communication for Fallout 76, and this game has come a long way since its original buggy release. If you haven't played Fallout 76 yet, I highly recommend you do so, especially regarding just how friendly and amazing the game's community is. But either way, that's everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. Like I said, nothing major, but I do want to update everyone on all the happenings and the recent news involving Bethesda in any way, shape, or form, and that's my aim with videos like this. I do have some pretty fun speculative videos involving The Elder Scrolls 6 and Starfield and just gameplay elements regarding those games that I would like to see, including a bunch of other fun stuff as well. But either way, that's going to finish up today's video. Let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below, and if you enjoy the content, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and turn notifications on. If you want to help grow the channel and the community, be sure to share the video as sharing videos is the best way to help grow a channel and a community and YouTube is kind of suppressing people from seeing my new uploads and my channel hasn't grown that much because of YouTube's stupid algorithm problems. So if you could do me a favor and share my videos, that would be a huge help and double check to make sure you are subscribed still as well. And as always, thank you to these fine, amazing people for going above and beyond to bring you content like this. If you want to get your name added to this list and get future video shoutouts like this, you can support the channel over on Coffee, Patreon, or here on YouTube as an exclusive channel member. Links for all this and more are down in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to tune in next time when we're one day closer to Starfield's release. And I hope the game doesn't have a buggy launch like Cyberpunk 2077. Bethesda has an amazing opportunity here. just works.